let's wail back into it now. Okay, right, now let's go to um, item 11, can we have order please, thank you, item 11, proposed regional land transport plan 15 to 25, excuse me, we have the chair of the uh, transport committee, Alan Dick, uh, presenting with Anne Redgrave, so the floor is yours. Well, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, we'll just make a few comments just to add a bit of context to the plan um, and what's uh, what significantly is different to previous plans. Um, and it'll, it'll be a bit of a double act, so uh, Anne will pop in when I overlook something. And we do not have a PowerPoint presentation for you. Um, <coughs> As is noted in the agenda item, the, uh, formerly we had a land transport strategy and a land transport program. Uh, these are now combined into regional land transport plan, which sets the, 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 the scene, looks at the issues, sets strategic and project priorities, um, and is the basis for uh, allocation of funding from NZTA uh, to those projects. One of the significant things that's changed is uh, funding. Uh, our funds, or in other words, regionally collected and regionally allocated funds, five cents a litre, uh, that ceased this year. The accumulated balance of about 26 million uh, will be pretty much fully expended on the already um, <coughs> committed and prioritised projects from the last plan which have migrated into this plan being um, the Wakatu Arterial, uh, the, the intersection of Pakapai and um, Lynx Road and the, the allied intersection at the other end uh, a roundabout from State Highway 2 and Napier Road and leading into arterial, in, in, to, into the Wakatu arterial. Um, so we, we have funding for that. What takes its place is uh, what they call a regional improvements fund, which again is five cents a litre, but rather than being um, put aside for regional transport committees to prioritise and allocate, allocated. Um, it goes into a central fund, which uh, NZTA will prioritise for um, regions that don't have a RON or road of na national significance. So Auckland, um, and Wellington won't have access to those funds, but uh, but the regions will. However, um, other than setting our priorities and communicating those to NZTA, we will have lost the ability to um, directly um, finance projects, which is a bit of a shame. And the whole theme for the next uh, foreseeable future is that there will be scarcity of funds for capital improvements, other than that particular fund, um, because the vast bulk of end funds uh, will go to continue to go to the roads of national significance. Mm -hmm. um, as I indicated, the, the pro project priorities, which are on page 21, um, continue to have Wakatu, Pakawai, Lynx intersection, State Highway 2, Napier Road as the, um, the top 
three projects and they will uh, absorb those R funds. The next priority items are HPMV North and South, that's provisioned for high performance motor vehicles which are a truck or truck and trailer combinations that can uh, cater for gross 63 tonnes as opposed to the standard um, weight limit for heavy traffic of 42 tonnes and the intermediate um, scale large trucks at 50 tonnes or 50 known as known as 50 max so it's quite it's very important to ensure the effectiveness and efficiency of the roading network that in particular the state highways and even significant local roads have the capability of handling 50 max and HPMV vehicles so the fourth priority there is uh, HPMV to the north, State Highway 2, and the second one is HPMV to the south. And that provides for the strengthening of structures like bridges, but it doesn't necessarily um, have any inf effect on improvement of the pavement or the, uh, the, the, the route orientation. Um, then coming down, we've got uh, Hastings District Council bridges for upgrading, again to accommodate the, the big rigs. Um, and then there's some work to be done on planning for the expressway, which is reaching capacity. Um, it's forward planning. And there's some quite vital work uh, to be done the intersection of um, Miani Key, Watchman Road and the expressway through to the airport to resolve um, congestion and safety issues there. And then um, it, we move on down to other priorities like um, <coughs> upgrading in the area of Pakipak through to Waipukarau. Now, um, a significant shift in emphasis has really developed over the, over the last two or three years um, as we've realised that what has been provided in the present plan and migrates into this one will largely deal with um, the inter-regional or within regional issues to ensure the effective uh, movement of um, in particular freight and people across the Heratonga Plains and across the region. But the emphasis in this plan now is to consider inter-regional um, activities to ensure that there are no impediments within the catchment of the Port of Napier, which we consider to be um, our uh, geographic region of interest and significance. Now, it's worth noting that with this very significant increase in volume that uh, Port of Napier has uh, achieved in recent years, it has largely been from out of the Hawke's Bay region and it's been reliant on um, good transport links like uh, HPMV on State Highway 5 to the Central Plateau, Taupo, um, and uh, rail to the south. Um, and basically product, export product, is being collected from Manawatu um, from Gisborne, again Central Plateau Taupo, and even as far away as as Wanganui. So we believe that th those locations and links are, are critical, and accordingly, um, 
there is an added focus to activities of interregional significance, and that's covered on page 34. It's worth just perhaps highlighting that, that schedule there. So um, the list includes the Expressway Pakafai and Lynx Road intersection improvements, HPMV to the north and the south, um, the need for planning for upgrading of the expressway, Kenneth Kendi Road to Miani Road, and out of region, um, the need for to advocate for route security and effectiveness in uh, the Horizons Manor 2, uh, given that uh, Palmerston North is increasingly a, a distribution hub for the uh, centre of the North Island, and advocacy is also being made into the <coughs> Gisborne District Transport Plan to provide for additional passing lanes on uh, State, State Highway 2 North. Um, the, the, the issues of real significance are that we've got a plan for significant increases in freight volumes. Uh, over the next tw 25 years, freight volumes in Hawke's Bay are, are, are planned, anticipated to increase by 50% across the region. And in fact, Port of Napier uh, is planning for a 50% increase in its volumes over the coming 10 year period. The, uh, the, the choke point or the, the route of greatest vulnerability and concern is State Highway 2 North or Napier, effectively Napier to Gisborne, and in particular because of the um, influence of the major um, forest harvests that are, are coming on. And the scale of that is that the regional harvest at the moment is about 1.3 million tonnes per annum, mm -hmm. anticipated to rise within a few years to about uh, 3.1 million tonnes and most of that coming from that viral area. So the plan uh, supports the re-establishment of, ra of rail to assist in carrying those volumes. But I would note that as a consequence of a submission that the plan provides that should rail not eventuate or become an impossible venture, then the committee would look to seek uh, funds from NZTA for a pre-feasibility study into the concept of um, the, the rail to road proposition, which is at first sight is very attractive and it looks to um, bypass the, the devil's elbow by using the rail corridor from Tutera through to the Esk Valley. Um, however, there are significant fish hooks, including cost. Uh, the proponents of this say that that stage would cost 60 million. Well, we, we have trouble finding five million dollars for anything. Uh, many who should know, have said that the 60 million probably would have another zero on the end, and then there are significant issues with um, whether the corridor can be freed up and uh, ownership issues given that the corridor was um, first secured under the Public Works Act and in, through dealings with uh, Māori, and we've already had um, a local Maori leader expressed the view that um, if you can't get the rail going, then we want the 
we want the corridor back, and they probably would have a very good claim. So, Anne, what, what to add to that? Um, just, just a couple of things um, to highlight that this is the region's funding application to NZTA for the next 10 years, although, of course, during that period there are regular reviews of the plan and things will change. Um, it proposes a spend of about 900 million in the region over the next 10 years and about 270 million of that would come from rates. Of course there's a lot of expenditure on state highways which are fully funded so that's what skews the balance in favour of uh, central government funding. And as uh, Councillor Dick has alluded to, that regional improvements fund um, we will be, as a, as a region that doesn't have a, a road of national significance, we will be competing with other um, areas that also don't have roads of national significance for funding for our additional improvements. However, I would add that um, many of those things that you see in the plan have the old R fund um, theoretically allocated to them. Um, and, and, you know, we, in that respect, we are lucky that we still have funds available to complete the major projects that we wish to do. So I think we both just take any questions. Councillor Belford. So looking, thank you Mr Chairman, looking at um, the Napier North card that you were mm -hmm. referencing on page, um, I'm looking at the monies on page uh, 21, uh, item 4, and then, uh, which, but that, if I understood you, that speaks strictly to bridges and structures only, right? Yes. Yeah. So then I turn to page 23, um, number seven. A lot of that road is actually, Hast is that Hastings' responsibility? Which one are we uh, So when you look at the Hastings number, uh, number seven, that line has a huge chunk of money in it. NZTA Hastings. Hastings. Maintenance Operations Renewals Program, HDC, number seven. Oh. Yes, Page 23. yes, yes. So, um, so that, that, that pot yes. would include is that the pot where monies would come from to basically keep State Highway 2 in good shape north of? No, no. Um, the, the maintenance and operations program is separate from the improvements. So State Highway 2 improvements north are for, is for added improvements to the State Highway for the HPMV capability, so things like bridge strengthening I think it's mainly bridges and culverts well that's the number that's the that's the four on page 21 right yes but what's the what I'm at what I'm getting at is can from these numbers can yes. one extrapolate what needs to be spent to to make state highway to log truck ready um, st given what the volumes that you were just talking about Yes, state, state highway expenditures, even though it's running through um, Hastings District area, is 100% is government funded through yeah. NZTA, so it's not yeah. in the HDC budget So it's nowhere in here at all? No, it is in yeah. there. It is a separate, as a separate line item, so um, maintenance and improvement of state highways will be under that particular um, category, but it's not Hastings District Council responsibility. So even, then, even though the highway then, runs through. Without then getting into where the line item is, is it possible to come up with a number as to what the anticipated additional cost would be of dealing with the freight on that particular road? Oh, I see. Um, I think probably the, the highway um, engineers could estimate that. It's not included as such improvements in the plan for coping with additional freight. What, what we've got in the plan is an item to strengthen bridges for the high productivity motor vehicles mm -hmm. to safely cross. Uh, and then separately, there's a maintenance and operations program for State Highway 2. Um, which, which is basically to maintain it in its 
present. State. State. Um, the HPMV improvements relate to the strength of bridge structures. They don't, uh, it doesn't involve um, strengthening of pavements or realignment of routes. And, but, and the comment was made a, a while back at a meeting that in, in terms of orientation and alignment of routes and knocking bits of corners off here, there and everywhere, uh, they've basically essentially done what's, what's able to be done uh, without uh, massive new expenditure. So that road is going to remain uh, well, the weak link across across the region, and it, it and it's also rated a, as a at the lowest level of safety for a state highway, um, and it's the only state highway in New Zealand accessing a, a port that has that low safety rating level. So. Uh, it's a matter of concern, but the problem is scarcity of funds um, uh, significantly Im increasing volumes and the fact that in the national context Rons and so on in Auckland and Bay of Plenty and Wellington are generally considered far more important. We've just got to keep plugging away, try and get some more um, passing lane opportunities. Um, and if we can get rail going, that's half the problem solved. Follow up. <coughs> just one last question on a different topic. On, on page 35, there is a mention in the uh, top right column to Highway 38. In the past, I've seen some vociferous presentations uh, on that subject. Is that just basically never going to happen? I, th I think there's the indications that things are, are on their uh, way. Um, you might like to comment, Ed. Yes. Um, the committee, this, this section 11 deals with things that aren't currently in the plan, as you've um, no doubt gathered, and that the committee wanted to see added. And we understand that funding will be put in to our draft plan. It doesn't mean it will actually be funded, but that in, um, NZTA's H&O people agree um, that that should go into their section. Uh, to have this study look, look at Wairo to Whakatane, it doesn't mean necessarily that um, the whole route will be sealed, but certainly they have recognised that it is important to the region, it's important for tourism, um, and, and that there is a strong um, desire to see it improved. Uh, I think it is. It's, uh, I think it's a case of the squeaky wheel, possibly finally getting a bit of oil. Um, and amongst the options being seriously considered is that the State Highway 38 would be passed over to Warra District Council to become, to become a local road. Um, and that's, that's happened pre before on the, the, the backcountry route up to, up to Gisborne. And State Highway 52 down the south. Yeah, yeah. Just a follow up for that, on that question. If it, if it was, I mean, how hard is it to get reclassified? I've heard this story too, but I mean, it's not as easy as just saying, oh, today we've decided it's going to be a local road. How, what process do they have to go through yeah. without elaborating too much? Well, they're in, they're in Wairau and NZTA are, are in discussions Discussion. and are keeping the Transport Committee informed uh, and that they're also talking to Wakatani District at the other end. The other end. So I think there's, there's a fair chance that something may well happen. Good. Further questions? Councillor Barker. <clears throat> I'd like you to give uh, uh, your assessment on the likelihood of getting significant funding for State Highway 2 north to uh, Wairau. Uh, <clears throat> given that whilst on one hand these things are uh, written up as benefit to cost ratios and so on, there's all the maths around it, but you can't ignore that a lot of these decisions are highly political and when you look at the pressure, for example, just one example is Wellington, 
where Peter Dunn has built his political career on th for 30 years on Transmission Gully and it's got no improvements yet, what chances do we think we're going to have to get a significant chunk of fun <coughs> money for State Highway 2, which is for most people in Wellington, out of sight, out of mind, <coughs> uh, uh, don't know, almost don't know where it is, uh, how do you think our chances are realistic? Putting aside all the other issues, I mean, it just seems to me to be an enormous ask, given the pressures on in Wellington, the Bay of Plenty, and in Auckland. I, I just think our odds are heavily outweighed on this. I'm well, to be realistic. Well, I agree with you, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think it's perhaps it's like the State Highway 38 example. If you keep on keeping on. Um, and in a sense the way that we're doing that is uh, putting a lot of emphasis and pressure on the rail solution um, then we've got a chance